This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we do encourage you to like and share them on Facebook. It's time for the African American scene, or every Wednesday evening in the 6 o'clock hour, brought to you by Howard Insurance of Port St. Lucie and hosted by Rudy Howard. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Always glad to be with you here on a Wednesday night. Woo wee! We had the hearings today, and I made this prediction almost two years ago. I was off time wise. But there's one foot in the impeachment hole right now. I mean, he got a foot in there, and they're going to take the other foot and put it in there, and they're going to impeach his behind. It's just as sure as the sun's going to rise. Uh, but but the uh, you got to admire the Repub- Republicans. They're fighting valiantly to try and keep it from happening, but I, I don't see much hope. Uh, those two guys that testified today were very, 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 very credible. Uh, and you could see there was no partisan in them. They were, just, they were just patriots. And some of you may feel that that was not impeachable. But for those of you that feel that that was not impeachable, just remember that President Clinton got impeached for a consensual relationship. May be unethical, but he got impeached for a consensual relationship. Now, compare that to what we're dealing with now, and you tell me which one was worse. Consensual. I want you to remember that word. It was a consensual a, a relationship. It may not have been age appropriate, but it was a consensual relationship. Okay, I just wanted to get that out there. So for those of you complaining about what's happening to Donald Trump, just remember what happened to President Clinton. And I will say to you, I did not think his behavior was appropriate. But I will also say to you, the difference between uh, Clinton and Trump so far is Clinton apologized profusely and acknowledge the fact that he let people down, and he was very sorry that that happened. Let's see if we ever hear that out of Donald Trump. I'll bet anybody that's on here right now, 100 bucks, if, if you believe that he's going to ever apologize for what he did. You got 100 bucks coming from me if you want to make that bet. Anyway, last week, uh, oh, another thing, Sunday night on 60 Minutes, Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Um, J. Morgan Chase, had a terrific interview with Andre Mitchell, who I just think is terrific. And he talked about some of the things that they're doing now. And uh, I don't want to sound pessimistic, but if you listen to what he's done, he's doing some fantastic things in Detroit, and he's now trying to spread the uh, activities to Chicago and a couple other cities. So he's making an investment to the tune of $500 million. Now, I want you to understand now, it's not a gift. He's making an investment, maybe a higher risk investment, but it's still an investment. So chances are he's not going to lose 100% of that money. And, uh, they made $32 billion last year. The bank made $32 billion. So what is $500 million? I theorize, and, and you can call me up and chastise me for this, but corporate behavior, having been in the corporate world for almost 20 years, They try to get on the front end when they see a negative attack coming. And with people pushing for wages, 
and talking about some of the inequities that exist within our economy, he's responding. And he's being very shrewd about it. He's trying to get out in front of making somebody make him do something and doing something himself. But in that interview, he admitted a couple of things that I think were really admirable. He admitted that wages are not appropriate and that there needed to be some growth in the wages. And, and uh, he further admitted, and this is going to really make some of my listeners mad, he didn't need that tax cut. He said, no, I, I really didn't need that tax cut. That, that was his words. So, uh, interesting. But I, I've seen it over and over. I could give you other examples, but I don't want to go down that track right now. But there, I can give you countless examples of when corporations respond to try to get out ahead of the remedy that might be facing him. Uh, and I think that's what he's doing. And, and, but there's going to be some people that could benefit by it. And the, there was one lady that he was working with in the city of Detroit to try to uh, rebuild the neighborhood that she had kind of adopted, and that, and that would be a good thing. Okay, last week I started, oh, one other thing. I keep skipping around here. I got a couple of phone calls this, this uh, past week, and I was telling Cliff before we went on the air, a couple of people said, don't let that Steve come on the air. He gets on, he tries to fill a bus, and he doesn't even talk straight talk. He, he talks gobbledygook. And I said, well, that's not my nature. I don't like to, anybody to think I'm ducking him. So uh, I, I may abbreviate some of his phone calls, but I won't just cut him off. That's well, you know, what's good about the, the delay and other, and other technology that we have, uh, you know, we, we can prevent the filibustering. You know, we can keep, keep, keep the reins on him, you know. But uh, we're not going to hold Rudy up for you so you can sucker punch him. <laughs> uh, last week I started something, and I never got through it, but I, so I want to try to finish it this week. You know, a lot of times I have to go two weeks to finish up a thing. And you're welcome to participate with your thoughts about this. This is called My American Vision. And I encourage you to tell me what, your vision for America is. Now, some of you may think some of my thoughts about what I want to see in America are a little Pollyannish, and that's fine, but, and we're going to hold that call till I get through this. Okay, here's my vision, and I'll come back and I'll, I'll deal with each one of these topics individually. Health care for all people. Popular vote for the presidential election. A law enforcement system that is fair and balanced. True free market economy. Democrats and Republicans can agree to disagree. Education system that acknowledges the contributions of all Americans. Now, this is my vision of America, and you can say some of this is just a little Pollyanna, but I, it's all right. I'll, I'll take that. A government not reluctant to help the least of these. Reduce military spending on hardware. Build affordable housing again. I note what I said. Build affordable housing again, because there was a time when we did build affordable housing and we stopped doing it to save money, and now we have people on the street. Federal support for postgraduate schools and technical schools. Protect borders, but allow a pathway to citizenship. Undocumented vets should not be deported. I'm going to repeat that again. Undocumented veterans should not be deported. If they're good enough to put their lives on the line for this country, it is really ridiculous that we're kicking them out. I, and I am deeply offended by that. And I'm not asking for open borders. I'm asking for a human decency. Severe penalties for employers 
who hire undocumented workers. I mean, not a spank on the hands. I want severe. If you want to stop undocumented, that's where you go. Review and revise regulations. Fair progressive taxation. And my last one is, hold on here. Okay, get the page over. And my last one is, okay, that's it. My last, that was my last one. Fair and progressive taxation. So that is my vision for America. And we got Winnie on line one. Yes, Winnie, how are you? Y- yes, Winnie. I have watched that impeachment inquiry. I don't understand. I don't understand it, but uh, how long is supposed to go on? And what's made to go? What's made to go come behind it? What do you mean? Uh, what's going impeach, on? Impeach inquiry. I was looking at it on CNN today. Okay. I don't understand it, but uh, what's made behind it? They go to. You know, what's based to have it, though? How long go, how long go keep going on with the hearing, the hearing? Well, they're going to they're gonna have some more hearings this week, and I think a couple next week. And what they're trying to do is allow the public to see what the subject matter is, to see whether or not they feel that impeachment is appropriate for uh, President Trump. So that's the real purpose. You just have to follow closely. But let me just give you the basic concept so you can get grasp this. The okay. basic concept is that he petitioned a foreign country to provide dirt on an American political opponent, and that's out of bounds. It's that simple. It's out of bounds. Mm-hmm. So if, if the, the, the argument is uh, whether he did it, that's number one. And if he did it, was it out of bounds? So that's the summary of the argument. If he did it, was it out of bounds, or did he do it at all? Okay? Uh-huh. Keep watching. Uh-huh. Keep watching. Uh-huh. I will. Okay, I will do that. I sure will. Okay, take care. Okay, Winnie. We got Jay on line two. Yes, sir. Oh, Rudy? Yes, sir. Uh, how you doing, man? Okay. Good, good. Uh, I, when you were talking about some of the things that uh, was, you know, what, what people would want, you know, bills passed or things to happen in this country, and I think I, uh, health care has always been a source problem. I, I never could figure out, uh, you know, and I've been in different situations where, uh, like when I went when I was drafted in the military, you know, every, I didn't have to even, you know, think about health care. I didn't have to worry about getting you know, going for exams or my family being taken care of. And my daughter was born when I was overseas, and I didn't have to, you know, go in my pocket for a penny. Everything was taken taken care of by the government, you know, because uh, that's the way it works with, you know, which is never really talked about when they criticize Elizabeth Warren. They always say, well, why is the money going? Well, uh, just look at the VA. Use that as an example. Or, 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 or the government, you know, military health care. Use that as an example, and they take very good care of, of the people that not only the, the, the troops, but their families yeah. also. Okay, never talked about. It. Never they, they they won't talk about how to get the money. They got the money, but they don't spend as much as uh, uh they, they because it's not privatized. It's not for profit. That's the big problem in this country for profit. That's right. You know, taking care of people, and in most countries, you know, they always talk about the uh, you know. Well, you know, Europe is different. You know, they have socialized. Med- yeah, well, it's like the word, it's a dirty word. But the people that have social, you know, that the people don't have to worry from, from, from cradle to grave. They don't have to worry about health care. They can worry about other things, maybe how they can, you know, uh, get education or how maybe they can get a job. But they didn't, the one thing they don't have to worry about uh, is if they get sick, they can go see a doctor. If they, have, if they have to go get an operation, they don't have to worry about that. They pay a little bit more on taxes. But it's worth it because they they're relieved of that worry of going bankrupt. You know, because it's just taking it. You know, if you don't have the money to pay for an operation, they okay. Let's we'll take your car and take that. What else you got? What else we can get from you to make sure you you know this is paid for? So that's that's one of the biggest problems in this country, and that should be taken care. It shouldn't be for profit. 
It shouldn't be that, uh, you know, people making millions and billions of dollars and, you know, uh, going to the, you know, people that, uh, uh, you know, they just worry about making sure that everybody, you know, on the top or the CEOs get some big bonuses and all that. Well, this, uh, right, let me let me say this, Jay. Yeah. I don't even care if they make money. That I don't, I, don't, yeah. I won't even object to that. But what I can right. object to is mm -hmm. these crazy behind people in this country that mm -hmm. don't want people to have health care. I cannot, for the life of me, come to grips with why people oppose that. I have, I think I'm a fairly intelligent guy, and I think I'm fairly open-minded. But when it comes to health care, I just cannot understand why people are opposed to people having health care. That's yeah. just bizarre. We're the richest country in the history of the world, and mm -hmm. we can't afford to give health care to our people. Right. It, it is kind of sad. And I think what it is is a lot. some folks don't think that certain people, you know, uh, don't de uh, don't deserve to have health care. I think it comes down to uh, class and race. There's a lot of things that's going on now that uh, and been going on since I can remember. It's always old class and race. Race is always on the top yeah. of anything that uh, decision making that people make, and you know they, they they cry about, complain about, and I think that's why they rally around this president because he's like that. He goes along with whatever, you know, he goes along with all that crap. And you're talking about a person that doesn't apologize. He was asking about Trump. To, will he apologize for anything? Oh. You know, he never he never apologized for what he tried. You know, he, he spent uh, thousands of dollars writing up about the Central Park fire. That was I five young that. men that were I remember in New that. York for, for a crime they didn't commit. Yeah, I was, he was there. The one. Nobody was talking about death penalty for them. They were just locked up and they spent 10 or 15 years in jail for nothing. After they, you know, then they found out the person that uh, actually raped the girl, the young lady in, in Central Park, was already in jail, and he uh, he admitted he, that he did it, and then they, they did a DNA check on him, and they found out he was the one. He was the culprit. And right to the day, right now, as we're speaking, he has not apologized for putting all those ads in the, you know, the, the New York Times. And I remember the that, The Daily Jane. News and the <laughs> New York Mirror, all the big papers in New York, he spent money on in, on the front page. Uh, they should be given the death penalty. Full page ads. Full page. Full page I remember ads. it. Yeah. 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 That's what he did. That's that's the president. Of, most of these folks down here don't know about that. But that's what the president of the United States did in New York about 15 or you know, almost going on 20 years ago, what happened to these young men. So that's one thing. But what happened today with this impeachment trial, it, it was beautiful because I love the way uh, this guy, Taylor, he was very good. He, uh, the guy had a heck of a, you listen to his resume of uh, what he'd done and accomplishments he made all throughout his life. And how could you say that he's, uh, you know, he's going along with, the, you know, he's, he's, he's a plant. How could he be a plant and his whole life was, uh, was dedicating his life to, to public service? That Jim Jordan. His whole life. That Jim Jordan is just a jerk. That's all. I mean, Jim Jordan's a jerk. Do you know the back line of Jim Jordan? Do you know yeah, that? I know about that from Ohio yeah, State. Ohio State. Yep, yeah, yeah, the guy yeah. molested. Nobody talking about that right now. I don't know why they just letting it slide. A hundred and seventy-seven kids. He that mm -hmm. guy allegedly molested, and mm -hmm. they said all of them knew it about it, including Jim Jordan. Yeah, he was like an assistant coach, wrestling coach, yeah, and he yeah. he was right there in the middle of it, and he knew what was going on, but didn't say anything. And they, and all of a sudden he jumps out, and when they have the investigation, and he's a congressman now. You don't, you know, he's playing Dennis or Dunce, but it seems like, uh, yeah, he's playing Dennis or Dunce. He doesn't, you know, no, but nobody brings up, even on the media, you would think that on some of these big, uh, big time stations like CNN or whatever, MSNBC, when they're talking about him, that somebody would say, bring that up and say, well, you know, somebody said he was, uh, he, he knew about it, but he didn't, didn't say anything. And it kind of ruined a lot of these young men's lives. You know, they're yeah. still, you know, very, kind of upset. The son probably need a lot of counseling. Yeah. And he's running around here and, yelling and screaming on the TV, and uh, he's got all these skeletons in his closet. Yeah. It's amazing, man. But I'll let you go. I just wanted Thank to you. throw that tip out there so Thank people you. can start thinking a little bit. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you always. Take, take care. Okay. Uh, now, I gave you all my prescription for how I, my vision for America. If you'd like to give me yours, I, I'm, I'm certainly willing to listen now. Let me come back and deal with some of my topics individually. One of my topics for my vision for America is Democrats and Republicans can agree 
to disagree. Now, that's possible. I know y'all don't think it is. It is possible, but you got to first start with facts. Can, let, me, let me spell that for you. F-A-C-T-S, facts. You got to start with facts. No conspiracy theories, no hyperbole, no making up stuff, because when you do that, you instantly alienate the other party. Instantly. Is hearsay okay? <laughs> if, if, if somebody's brother's mother's sister's friend said something and I heard it, would that would I be a credible witness? No, I oh. I don't think so. But I, oh. I I think you can, I think you can, try to verify hearsay. That's done all the time in the court of law, and and that's okay. But but here's the here's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. That stupid Alex Jones saying that the the shootings in Connecticut were fake and they weren't real. He devastated those parents who lost kids in that that shooting incident. That's just stupid, ignorant, and ridiculous. And uh, here's another one. Loretta Lynch met with... Uh, Bill Clinton on the uh, airport. W their two planes were there, and they had a conversation. Nobody heard the conversation. They said they talked about their kids. Everybody came to the conclusion there was a diabolical plot that was hatched between Bill Clinton and Loretta Lynch to try somehow to extricate Hillary Clinton from her current legal problems. That's totally ridiculous, unfair. If you have no idea what was said. Now, if you, if there was somebody that said they overheard a conversation or something, okay, but if you heard nothing, then what you just did is you just made up something out of nothing. I, I would even listen if you had some hearsay about what was said. I, I would even give that some legitimacy, but you had nothing, and you made that up, and you blew it up. Now, speculation can be a a, a, a good tool for for starting to, to understand something by just simply asking more questions. But speculation isn't necessarily testimony. However, it does hold it does hold some kind of weight. Well, speculation is okay as a starting point. And you can go out and test and try to verify your speculation because speculation and hypothesis are the basis upon which uh, scientific discoveries are made. So, yeah, that's okay. But don't just uh, come to that and then just blow it up into a gigantic uh, big mess. Now, let's talk about free market true free market and uh, I I remind all of you who might like to call me a socialist I'm a businessman I've been in business for over 20 years I believe in uh, the free market I believe in capitalism but what we have now doesn't work it's distorted it's contorted and there has to be a change in the way the system operates that's what Elizabeth Warren's talking about. And, and, and that's even what Steyer, the, the billionaire who's in the race, is talking about. There has to be an adjustment on how we're doing business. Uh, the the uh, net influence of money has far outstripped the uh, free market. Free market is, is a joke. Now, and I'm going to just give you one example. And I, and I saw this in two different books I read. I read uh, 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 the book Saving Capitalism for the Many, Not the Few by Robert Reich. And then I read a book called Who Stole the American Dream by Hedrick Smith. And both of those books came up with the same example. And I'm going to share this with you just so you can understand my concern about capitalism and that it's not anti-capitalism but for fair capitalism. There is a patent law for, for prescription drugs. 
And in theory, it is 17 or 19 years. Don't hold me to that. It's one or the other, 17 or 19 years. At the end of that period, that pat, that drug that you created exclusively, the patent expires. And a company is then permitted to create a generic form of the drug, which is usually a third to a half the cost of the brand name drug. Now, watch what happens. When you come close to that 19-year period, the company with the brand name drug has, can go and tweak it and come up with enough changes that it would require an extension of the patent for another 19 years. And in the event that they can't come up with a tweak to extend the patent, watch what they do. They buy out the company that is prepared to manufacture the generic brand. So if I'm ABC, Rudy Howard, and I have created a generic of the brand name drug, you find out about it and you give me $10 million does not produce that drug, where the heck is the free market at? You just took it out of the game. So now the price of that drug never goes down because they just bought out the competition. Now, I defy anybody to call up and argue with me that that's free market. That is not free market. That's rigged market. Sounds a little monopolization. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, it's a complete forest. And, it, it, and, you know, we pay for that. We pay for the cost of that because... The company was able to go out and buy out that generic drug company to keep them from trying to uh, produce to producing that that particular drug. Here's another one. This I think is very important and 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 is is very much understated. An education system that acknowledges the contributions of all people. Unfortunately, our history books have been washed, whitewashed. No pun intended. <laughs> but our history books have been whitewashed. And the contributions of, of African Americans, Indians, Hispanics just have been left out. Now, let me tell you what's wrong with that. Part of having self-confidence and <coughs> pride in who you are is understanding about yourself. Part of the ability to know and understand people is having information and understanding people. Unquestionably, almost, I would say, more than 75% of the time, if there is a white person that has had an intimate relation, not, I'm not talking sexual, that's had an intimate relation with somebody from another race, they have a totally different attitude than a person that's never had that because they're not filled with the stereotypical information that brainwashes too many people. So... And, and you can, and I'm going to tell you, and there's some black people on here that would tell you that I'm right. I can tell probably within 10 minutes of meeting somebody if they've ever had a relationship with somebody of a different race other than themselves. I can tell it like 10 minutes flat. Uh, and it's just, it's the interaction that they have with you that lets you know a certain level of comfort, you know, that they have. And and I could tell by watching you two. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's quite obvious. There are mannerisms and body languages when people are very uncomfortable. Yes, absolutely. You know, yeah. You, you can tell they've never uh, uh, been to a neighborhood barbecue. Yes. Or, or or any of the many, many, many things we all ha we all have in common. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, so and so I think that that will go a long way. And and I think <coughs> as I sit in Walmart during this open enrollment season, I have to tell you, boy, we are now so mixed. It is like unbelievable. <laughs> when I'm sitting there and I'm watching the couples walking through the door, uh white and black and Spanish and black and Spanish and white. They're all coming through. They're holding hands, babies in carriages. And I just sit there and I look to myself and I go, that's pretty interesting. And then I saw something else. And I want you to look for this uh, as you're watching TV. Nissan has cut a commercial. And my wife didn't even notice it. and And I had to point it out to her. It is all interracial, the entire commercial. And I sat there and I watched that. And the end of that commercial, I said, well, man, can you imagine that? They did an entire interracial commercial about a Nissan car, about Nissan cars. And I said, boy, the advertise, they're really reaching out. It's, they're trying to cross a bridge. And if you notice, there's other commercials where they've done some uh, reaching out. I know there's this, the, the uh, Humira commercial with the white dad and the black daughter. Uh, and it's a very loving commercial where he's taking his daughter to the ice cream shop and picking her up from school. I said, you know, they're trying to help bridge the gap here, and I think that's I think that's pretty cool. So, uh, and, and here's another one. I talked about this. Please allow for some uh, building of affordable housing. Now, that was done, and most of us my age will remember that. And they tore down many of those old buildings, and some of those old buildings were drug-infested places, and they were not the nicest places to live in. But you know what? People weren't living on the street in a cardboard box. One of the things about Southerners and the poor Southerners, most Southerners had a house. It might have been a shack with just a couple boards holding up a roof, but they had a roof over their head. They weren't sleeping under a tree or by a, a, a riverbed. I think we can do better. We used to build affordable housing. We stopped doing it because, uh, I guess, because of the uh, thing of wasting federal money. I don't know how you're wasting federal money when you're trying to keep people from living on the street corner in a cardboard box. But, and as I said before last week, once you're in that trap, it is a very, very hard trap to get out of. And I gave you the mathematics for that of what it would cost a person who is in a tent to get out of the tent and into an apartment. We can, we can, and, and, I, and I'll tell you, I lived in a place called Columbia, Maryland. And they had a very unique uh, approach to uh, uh, equi- equitable housing opportunities. And I hope we have some people listening because I I think it's something that worked. In Columbia, Maryland, what they did was when you built a new apartment building, you had to set aside 25% of the building for low to moderate income people. You could rent the rest of the building at regular rate, but 25% of the building had to go for low to moderate income people. So you had, in in essence, a waiting list for a lot of the apartment buildings because people were waiting to get in there. But the other thing that you had is you had people, the affordability factor for the low to moderate income people allowed them to be in a building with other people who were able to pull a fair full rate. So what you had was a building that never became deteriorated like some of the buildings in the past we've seen like in Boston or Philadelphia or New or the Bronx or you just didn't see that because there was only a limited number. 
but they still had that opportunity to be in a nice apartment building and it was subsidized, but only to the tune of 20, I think it was 25 or 30%. I think that's a good idea. What's wrong with that? If you ask the apartment people to set aside that percent for low income. So I think we have to do something because the affordable housing crisis is almost as bad as the health crisis right now. If you'd seen that street in L.A., it's a whole row of people with tents and cardboard boxes. Matter of fact, <coughs> I think the city recently put part of porta potties on that on that block. But but we can do we can do better. There's no reason why we can't restart the rebuilding of affordable housing. We did it once before. We can do it again. Now, I think that we can reduce uh, regulations without eliminating regulations. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you the, the difference. And many of my conservative friends want to eliminate regulations. But let me remind you of why we end up with regulations. Regulations are usually a response to some bad actors. So they create a regulation to protect us uh, as the citizenry of the country. Now, do those regulations sometimes go overboard? Yes. I can't say that every regulation is a good one. But what I will say to you is this. This idea that people sit down in a room and just dream up regulations just for regulation's sake is just a hoax. Now, I, I will give you a close personal, personal example with Medicare. Medicare is regulated up the yin, and they have tried to relax it in the last two years, but now let me tell you what happened initially. When they first allowed the private market to offer plans to the, uh, um, the Social Security age uh, people of our, of our, st of our uh, state, of the United States, they got abused. There was unethical agents going in and signing people up for stuff they had no idea what they were getting. They didn't understand the project. So now they, so the, the, the government reacted. Now, and I'm a victim of this, it is really overkill what they do now. But I understand it. I understand why they did it because I understand the history of it and the need to protect people. And even with all the protections that we have now, there's still people out there that sell Medicare products that are not very ethical. So yes, let's look at regulations, but eliminating regulations on a wholesale basis because we expect that the free market will police itself, N not gonna happen. Never has happened and it ain't gonna happen either time in the near future and if you think so you're only fooling yourself and the number is 3401590 3401590 but now here's another one of my visions for America I want undocumented vets to not be deported if a person signs up to the service and is willing to lay down their life for detection for the protection of all American citizens why would we then turn around and deport them I think that is absolutely disgusting I think that speaks horribly about who we are as human beings 
if you feel that strongly about it, don't let him in the doggone service in the first place. I'd have more respect for you if you said you won't let undocumented people serve than to let them serve, let them put their life on the line, and then tell them you don't want them. You know, and I think that's disgusting. If you know Tammy Duckworth, I think she's a, a congressperson from or senator from Illinois. She spent Veterans Day over in Mexico visiting with undocumented veterans who had been deported and uh, who had known nothing but America for most of their lives. And there they are over in Mexico because they didn't have the proper documentation, but they were veterans. Now, and now, and let's add insult to injury. As retired vets, they would be entitled to health care benefits that they can't access. I want somebody's, I want one of my conservative friends to call me up and show me how that's fair. Sh show me how that makes any sense. Maybe fair doesn't matter to you, but there is no sense of fairness in that at all. Okay. Now, uh, let me see. What's one of my other ones? The, the other one, one of the things I've said here is that if you really want to stop undocumented workers, and I have said this for 10 years, you have to come down like a ton of bricks on the people that's hiring them. No slap on the wrist or a $500 fine. If you really want to stop it, you got to slam the people that are hiring undocumented because that's the only way it's going to stop because they come here for a better life and because there's employment opportunity. If there's no employment opportunities, then they're not going to come. There'd be no benefit to coming here. So give that some thought. Now, here's the other thing. Fair, progressive taxation, which is one of the burgeoning calls of Elizabeth Warren and uh, Bernie Sanders, I think is on point. And Chuck... Uh, while we're on this, I hope you checked out what I told you about your Social Security check being taxed and that you can go back and file some amendments since you haven't been filing taxes on your Social Security payment because you are, have been taxed since Reagan put in a tax cut. I think it was in 1973. He cut the top rate from 70 to 28 percent and then added taxation on Social Security checks. And you said no, and I told you to go check, and I hope you did, because since you've been filing your own taxes, you could get yourself in a heap of trouble if you're not paying taxes on your Social Security earnings. Now, it is ridiculous that hedge fund billionaires pay a 15% tax. I don't get that. But it's okay with so many of you. You don't care. And you talk about you talk about an injustice. Now I'm, I'm gonna show you an injustice. A hedge fund person is basically just basically themselves. They might have a small group of people working the hedge fund. You got poor little guy like me. I gotta pay 941 tax, which is the federal income tax for my employee. I got to pay unemployment compensation tax. Then I have to pay for, my employee has to pay for Social Security tax. I have to pay for part of her Social Security tax. And then I have to pay for my own Social Security tax. And then we have companies paying no taxes. No taxes. Let me give you a list of some of the companies that paid no taxes. Netflix, Amazon, Chevron, Delta, Eli Lilly, GM, IBM, and JetBlue. There was a six, there were 60 in total. I just gave you those, a quick list. 
Those people paid. No. I would repeat, they paid no income taxes. No taxes to the federal government. None. Now, how does that make sense to you? Steve last week said, yo, they shouldn't pay. I said, well, explain, somebody explain to me why they shouldn't pay taxes. Of Actually, of all of those people that I named, the only one that I have seen making a very substantial investment in the economy uh, is Amazon. They've been opening up places across the country and, and new uh, sites. Uh, you could almost make an argument that they have earned the right to no taxes, but they still should pay something. They shouldn't pay zero. That's just, that's just ridiculous. Here's another one. And I'm sure you didn't know anything about this. Cruise line businesses. Do you know cruise line businesses are American businesses? Well, they got casinos downstairs, down at the bottom. Yeah, but they don't pay any taxes. You know why they don't pay any taxes? Why? Listen to this, Cliff. They incorporate their uh, companies in foreign countries so that they're not taxed on an American basis. Like, let me give you an example. We can't do that. <laughs> come, come to Howard Insurance and uh, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, or, I guess. Or anywhere you, else. If I had enough money, I guess I could. But, but look, Carnival Incorporated is incorporated in Panama. Oh. Royal Caribbean is incorporated in Liberia. That's not even in the Caribbean. I know. <laughs> wow. Royal Caribbean. Oh, that's right. I said Royal Caribbean's in Liberia. Princess is incorporated in Bermuda. Now, when you think about Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Princess, are those American companies to you? Well, they have that. Marketing sound like they are. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> but they're not. Oh, my. And think about the billions of dollars going through those companies for cruises. Not to mention port fees on top of that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. See, you didn't even know that, right? They're not, they're not paying taxes. They no, I, I had no idea. <laughs> So, so when somebody tells me a guy bought a steak on a snap card, I look at him and I think to myself, you got to be kidding me. You worried about a guy that bought a sirloin steak? What about the, the uh, uh, you, you've got, let's see, we, we've got, I'm, I'm, I'm just, this is just blowing my mind over here. <laughs> I think get, get dumbstruck over this, but uh, you know, when you buy something on a cruise ship, you don't pay sales tax, like from the gift shop. Uh, Some of it, they have, they have, they waters. have, they have duty free shops oh. on the ship, okay. where you get a chance to buy. Some items duty free, like some military bases have. Yes, yeah, okay. so you can actually buy sh stuff on the ship. Uh, no taxes, and they, but they, in theory, they're supposed to limit the amount of stuff you can buy, and it has to be shipped to the shore when you when it pulls in. Kind of makes me wonder, you know. I mean, all the money one could save on, on a, on a college education for a young person, as opposed to, not in place of a sentence in a prison, but as a, a preventative measure, you know, long before the crime could happen. The college being less money, how much money could the c the country benefit by taxing just cruise lines? Oh my God, Cliff! Can you imagine? I mean, that is probably, especially for middle income come people, that is probably the number one vacation of most middle income people. You you probably hardly don't. You, it'd be hard for you to know anybody that, that hasn't done a cruise. 
No, uh, even I've done a cruise. Uh, yeah. We're down to the final three minutes, and now the phones want to ring. I don't know. Can we grab grab one? Let's real grab quick, this real yeah. quick. Okay. Hi there. You're on the radio with Rudy Howard. Hey. Good evening. You know, listening to the last couple minutes of your uh, taxing talk, if everybody, you know, everybody goes to the accounting firm of their choice at the end of the year, and what do they try to do? They try to get as much money back as possible, pay as little taxes as possible. Yeah, yeah. And I just find it un unsettling to think that, hey, maybe we should reach out to these other companies that were smart enough to avoid the federal taxes in the United States, and let's reach out and take some of their money because look how much money they make and look how much they avoid their taxes. Just my point. I'll get back to listening on the That's radio. Point. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Good point. Okay. And, uh, don't, no. That that's not a good point, wow. and I'm going to tell you why it's not a good point. Is is it's not that I want to take their money, mm -hmm. is that they're making their money based on the American people. Why are you oh, going to yeah. make all your money based on me, and then you don't want to make your fair share contribution to our economy? I, I listen. I don't have anybody any trouble with people trying to save money on the taxes. We all do try to do that. But I can tell you in 2018 I had to pay money to the federal government for taxes and I'm just a little guy. So uh, if I have to pay money and pay taxes for my employees Shouldn't there be more incentives towards small business owners <laughs> yes. instead of these big corporations? Yes, 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 yes. But anyway. But anyway, that that's one of my conservatives calling up and saying, well, what's wrong with them not paying taxes? If, if they're not paying taxes, it's affecting your pocketbook for the taxes that you're paying yeah. and the roads that need to be fixed and the things that need to be done. That's it. We're at the end of the hour. Wow. Thank you so much for tuning in to the African-American scene. Next week, I will have on the winners of the Omega Sci-Fi essay contest, and they will be right here in studio. I would like to thank you so much for listening to the African American scene. God bless and be safe, and I'll see you next week right here on Wednesday. Your life will never be the same. You have witnessed the African American scene right here on WPSL every Wednesday night at the 6 o'clock hour. Rudy Howard, your friend from Howard Insurance, comes your way right here live. It's great. You can see archives of this show on YouTube Look for WPSL TV. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie. The talk of the Treasure Coast webcaster to the world.